You also have a venture capital climate here of a form that you... I just returned last week from Sweden, for instance, where there was a major symposium on exactly that, the interface of academia and, and industry. It was the 400th anniversary of, uh, of uh, University of Uppsala, and they brought people from all over and gave me spoke about that uh, in a rather panel discussion, and I think most people agreed with me. This is a climate here that you simply cannot replicate, for instance, in Sweden, even though there's a lot of very great talent there. Uh, I think we, there are a number of other things we shouldn't forget, and that is really, this is a true melting pot. I really have to tell you, as an example, I gave a commencement uh, address at Berkeley a couple of years ago. I was very struck by that. Uh, Berkeley, they don't have it like at Stanford, just one commencement speaker. They have quite a number of different disciplines, and I was in biological ones. And all the students, individually, each get a diploma over a couple of hours. You know, it's only a few hundred students rather than a few thousand that we have here. And I looked at the names, because I sat on the dais next to the professor who gave him uh, these, uh, these uh, diplomas. And as I marched up, looked at, you know, I looked for the greens and browns and whites and smith on the names. There was an odd one here. That I think one of these, I forgot which one it was, was totally absent, which, you know, historically is impossible. If you look at the phone books of uh, a few years ago, it's impossible. Even now you see a lot of them. But you looked there, there weren't any. And then you came to the L's, for instance, suddenly it was Li, 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 Lu, Liu. Then you came to the W, and it was Wang's, or to the Chen's, to the C's. And I would say easily 50% of the graduate class of these scientists had Asian names, you know, the Asian surname. Now it may have been Chinese, Japanese, a lot of Indian, from, I'm talking about South Asian Indians. But this, you remember in California, this is the creme de la creme. I mean, Berkeley in our system here are the best students of them all. Easily over 50% of these now are there. If you look at any scientific journal, I mean, any scientific journal, you can't find an article now in which one of the authors doesn't have a China, uh, an Asian, usually Chinese or Indian, surname. You go and look into Swedish papers, for instance, you find hardly any. There'll be Gustafsson and Carlson and Williamson and, and Johansson and so on, very homogeneous. And there's two of a lot of other European places. And I tell you, that is one of our powerful strengths. It isn't just these names. You now suddenly see quite a number of Russian names uh, in, in American scientific publications because we are the beneficiaries of a substantial Russian immigration now, which on the whole, like a Jewish emigration from Central Europe, which, for instance, people like myself reflect, where really highly educated people came, which is very different from some other immigration. And where the work ethic, for instance, that you see now among Chinese students, if you look at the Phi Beta Capital at Stanford, the high proportion of Oriental, of Asian names. And that is basically, in spite of everything you see about Proposition 187 and everything else, it still is a climate which, at least at that level, at the intellectual level, n welcomes, absorbs them, and utilizes them effectively.